Yeah, now we really get, we are 57 of 63 and the last one is of no interest. So I only show you two highlights of the um, ML style um, matching. And then we will close this talk, sorry for the time. The structuring bind. I have a type S fictitious struct of A with integer and B as float. I let foo be a list of two tuples, each with an integer on the first position, and this struct of type S on the second position. By the way, you see you don't have to type S there, because I use a structure which has the property A, it automatically deduces that it must be of type S. So it's also convenient. And then I say, okay, let, and now I destructure, list tuple, next item of list tuple, of the first tuple I take only the first value of the tuple, of the second tuple I ignore the first value and take only the B property of um, B is Y, I yes. have written that in the wrong direction, it should be Y equals B, sorry about that, not B equals Y, um, y. oh B equals Y, of course B equals Y, sorry I am confused already, it's getting late. Um, only take the structure and only take the B property of the structure. More or less, you write out how the structure looks like and in the places where the values would be, you write your variable names. And this works and then you get x is 1 and y is 4.4. So I actually executed this, yeah, this really works. <laughs> Um, you're mentioning structures, I can't recall whether or not you mentioned ah. it concerning the data structures, but it's actually a record? It's or? a record, okay. sorry. That's my C heritage okay. leading through. Um, <laughs> it's a record. It's okay. also in F sharp a record because a structure is a value type in .NET. Okay. And I'm actually quite um, angry of the F sharp compiler because it does not implement the record as a structure but it implements it as a reference class, which is comparable and structurally equatable, but not as a structure, which uh, means performance loss. Okay. Yeah, but optimization is not uh, part of today's topic, uh, but destructuring is, and this is cool, and this works in app bindings, this works in function arguments. You can make your function, and you define, let function name, argument, 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 argument. You can argument and you make tuples and lists and arrays and records in your arguments and it will destructure when you call the function um, into that stuff. And that's cool. In camel lisp this also works but only with a much worse syntax. There is a destructuring dash bind <laughs> and then you start writing. In a part it's just there. And it works in pattern uh, bindings. And patterns is the last topic for today. And what does it do? I'm sorry that I cannot show you the cool stuff of pattern matching today. But I can show you the basic idea. We define a record of person. We define a type employee, which is, by the way, a discriminated union. Uh, what is a discriminated union? It's just um, like a C union, but just that you store which type is it. And it, it can contain several types. It's like a boost or riot in C++. And okay, this employee type is either an engineer, which has itself the type person, or it's a manager, which has itself the type person and contain an uh, employee list. This star here, by the way, I didn't explain it, this says this is a tuple. Yes, we have the same symbol for several different things. I'm sorry, but reality um, is there. This is an off tuple of person and a list of employees. Now, we define a person. Again, it knows that it is a person. We define a, man a manager. Here we have to write it out a manager because otherwise it would only be a tuple. Yeah, here we have to write the type. And we make the manager itself a person with name M. And we, it has, he has one um, employee of an engineer. And then we match, match M with engineer or manager. Now, the sharp compiler now knows that M must be of type employee. This must even always be a distinct type. You cannot say, for instance, say match M with string, integer, engineer and manager. 
because there is no discriminated union which has all these types collected in one. So it knows because the first match already is engineer, it knows that it must be at least uh, this union type. Okay, and now we for each um, entry that this there is possible, we say um, we match it. We match an engineer, we match a manager, and again, like the restructuring bind, where usually the value would be, we now write the variable name. And this means the content of engineer is bound to the variable e, which is then a record of type person. And the first record of manager is bound to m, and the second item of manager, which is a list, is bound to e. So we know we have m is of type person and e is of type um, engineer list. And here for convenience I just used person %a because I didn't uh, now show recursion again. Um, I just print out. Yeah, what will it print out if we match m with uh, these two? m is a manager, so yes, we have a manager, type uh, uh, name is m, m name. And then we have our um, square brackets that I, uh, square brackets, braces that I uh, wrote there. And then we have the printing of the engineer list, which is an engineer with the record name is E. Yeah. This is only a little bit of what pattern matching can do. It can match against dynamic types. You can use match guards. You can uh, match, um, of course, much more complicated functions. You can uh, use recur uh, recursion in the uh, part. You can use active patterns where you define a function uh, which returns uh, some binding or not and then use this function as part of the pattern match. Uh, it's extremely flexible, it's extremely powerful and it's usually, I say usually, compiled in an efficient way. Sometimes not. And I have not yet found out why sometimes such simple matches have uh, uh, how is this uh, cyclomatic complexity of 150. I don't get it. <laughs> but usually it's very efficiently compiled and um, it's enormously convenient. So this is one of the reasons why object orientation in F-sharp loses much of its appeal. Because pattern matches are such much more powerful. Also with pattern matches, you don't have open multi-methods, but I can have tuples with different types and sometimes and suddenly I can call a function not depending polymorph on the first, on the this pointer, but polymorph on all items of the tuple. And that's cool. And it's the reason why you use pattern matching quite much. I assume multi-methods are still more powerful because here you can only distinguish per type whereas where with multi-methods you can distinguish per values. Mm -hmm. You can here distinguish by values too. But open okay. multi-methods are more powerful because they automatically know about inheritance hierarchy. So in multi-methods I can you have a hierarchy of matches and the best, the most specific match is taken first. Okay. And it automatically falls to a worse match if uh, no exact match is found. With okay. pattern matching you always need an exact match. Okay. Of course you can use um, type queries uh, with colon question mark where you say does this type implement this interface or is this an instance of that class. But um, it's inconvenient and it works not that great. Okay. Um, but basically, open multi methods also have, for instance, the capability that you chain uh, the function to your base implementation. You know, in many implementations, you have your own implementation and then invoke the base implementation, which uh, all the other stuff is said. Um, for open multi methods, common lisp style it is more easier. It's just easier. But that's already quite cool. Now, caveats. Yeah, I already told you, ambiguous overload, member functions, type deduction, game over. Um, automatic generalization, when I said to you in F sharp, um, all types and functions are generics by default. There are a few issues, by the way, this is the same as in Haskell, so if you know uh, problems with automatic generalization in Haskell, you know it in, the, in F sharp. Um, this has something to do that um, in specific, that you have literal types and that you can have type values 
and because, well, it's details, okay? It's just there are sometimes exist problems. And also, the most convenient code is not the fastest code. This is important to know, but I actually didn't find that so much of a problem. Yeah, here are just a few links. So this is my last slide. After just a little bit above two and a quarter hours. <laughs> um, we only scratch this out first. I, there are some cool features I didn't show yet. Operator overloads, operator definitions. You can create your own crazy <laughs> operators. Um, you can how to write monads, how to write type providers, inline functions. Inline functions um, are inline functions have a, cool, a few cool type deduction um, mechanisms where you can, for instance, uh, say for all types that have a member function with name hello, which is a little bit like duck typing, and uh, you can emulate type classes with them, and. You have active patterns in pattern matching, which I uh, said you can write your own function for which you use in patterns. Pattern guards, for instance, I can write pattern and then say when, for instance, I can say um, pattern this record when the name of the uh, in this record um, starts with Marcus. So you can even uh, match to substrings and stuff like that. Custom literals, arbitrary precision mark, uh, units of measure, you can use physical SI units in F sharp. You say float, and then you make float a generic, and then the float is either Newton or Ampere, and then you multiply stuff together, and then it's automatically, uh, for instance, uh, Newton times meter is Newton meter, and you cannot um, set this value to something that expects Ampere. So great for physical stuff. A literate F sharp, you cannot do literate programming in F sharp. And um, quite convenient, you write a script, you write markdown, you write a sharp, it just works. And I didn't even write that we have exceptions. Yes, you can say raise exception, and you can catch exceptions. You can rethrow exceptions. Yeah, of course, we are on .NET. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this was the surface. Well, thank you very much for um, your listening and for also for your um, participation and for your interest. And I will now conclude this um, talk. And uh, well, if anybody has any questions, <laughs> come directly to me. Um, I will be here at least until midnight. And well, thanks. <laughs>